A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scripture, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I think that um, an important part of our Christian life is, um, is, are the fruits that we bear when we live out our Christian lives. What does that mean? Well, first of all, we have to have faith. We have to, have, we have to be people of faith. We have to accept the Lord as our Savior. We have to um, have a relationship with God. And this is, of course, um, required for anyone who has any kind of faith or relationship with God. That's almost, I don't even need to say that, really. Our faith is founded in a relationship with God, and it motivates us to uh, bear fruit. And Jesus talks about the fruit, uh, bearing fruit. Well, what are fruits? I think that we could say that the fruits that we bear in our lives of faith are probably those things that we do when we put ourselves in service to the gospel and to um, the world around us. Well, what does that mean? It means, I th rather simply, if I claim to be a Christian, the way that I live my life must bear fruit. In, in other words, I, I ha there has to be evidence of my Christian faith by the, the things that I do. And that's true of all of us. Jesus tells us that you know, he is, he is the vine, we are the branches, the branches bear fruit. Pretty simple to me. The first reading um, from today's Mass, as well as the Gospel, have something to tell us about uh, vineyards and, and grapes and, and, and fruits and those who work the vineyards. And in the first reading from Isaiah, we see that uh, it says, let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning the vineyard. He says, uh, my friend had a vineyard, uh, it was on a fertile hillside, he worked to clear the stones, and he planted uh, grapes or grapevines that were supposed to produce like choice, the choicest of grapes. 
He built a watchtower. He hewed a wine press. And he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes, or rotten grapes, grapes that were no good. He put all this effort into putting together a vineyard, and he received nothing in return. Now, I'm not a, 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 a farmer. I've never worked in a vineyard. I'm a city kid. But the little that I do know about grapes, I do know that um, you can't just plant a grapevine like today and expect to get fruit on, on those vines like right away. I'm told that it takes a good three years, three years from the time that you plant the vines until they first start to bear fruit. That's what I'm told. So I don't know. I mean, if you're like me, you might, you might not be very patient and want to wait three years for the, for the fruits of the vine. Okay, so that just, I think it's important to know as we contemplate the effort that goes into putting together a vineyard and growing grapes and all that. It's just kind of a, a part of the story we need to understand. The, the, the effort and the time it takes to uh, plant a vineyard and produce fruit. So with that in mind, we see that after this um, extended period of time and all of the effort that uh, Isaiah talks about in the first reading of the vineyard owner, that he didn't, he didn't get a return. He, he, it, the grapevines produced, it says, um, wild grapes. Wild grapes, which were useless. In another translation, we see that the, the grapes were, were rotten grapes. Completely unusable. All of that effort for nothing. And uh, it's often a connection between the first reading and the uh, gospel reading, at least a thematic connection between the two readings. And, and today is certainly a case. Is certainly the case. We have uh, mention of a vineyard, grapes, etc. In the first reading, and Jesus talks about um, a grape vineyard in the gospel today, and he, he talks about how. Um, the landowner planted a vineyard and put a hedge around it and all that stuff. It's similar to the, what we heard in the first reading. And uh, he put the vineyard, um, uh, he put the vineyard under the care of his servants. Again, remember they had to wait three years and do all that work. And then, so finally the guy uh, comes back, I guess after three years, and he wants, you know, he wants to collect the fruits of his uh, investment. He wants the servants who've worked the vineyard to put forward what they have produced. And they fail to do that. And it says here, you know, uh, he, when he sent, he sent to his servants, um, he sent them uh, people to, you know, to collect what, they, what was coming to him. And it says uh, they beat one of the people, they killed another, the third they stoned sent other servants, more numerous. They treated all these servants who were sent by the master in the same way. That he wasn't going to get his fruit. He wasn't going to get those grapes according to the will of those uh, malcontent and perhaps evil um, servants in the vineyard. And we see here that he finally sends his son, and uh, even, even the son they don't respect, and they kill him. Well, Jesus is kind of, you remember, he's talking to the elders and the chief priests, and he's kind of, kind of digging at them, kind of making an analogy between them and these uh, malcontent servants in the vineyard who don't accept the messengers, maybe the prophets, um, Jesus himself. And they, they are like those who refuse to work with the master in order to see that there might be fruits born um, from the vineyard. They put a stop to it. So in the first reading, the master of the vineyard gets nothing on return. And in the second, or this gospel reading, the master, that is God the Father, gets nothing on return from sending the prophets, his son, etc. In fact, it's, it's, it's reje they're rejected. Jesus is rejected. And so Jesus says, using this grape 
uh, this vineyard comparison, he says, therefore I say to you, as opposed to these chief priests and elders, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce fruit. Wow, that's pretty, pretty serious. In other words, Jesus entrusts the production of fruit from the vineyard to people that the chief priests and the elders, let's call them the Pharisees and scribes and all those people, those religious leaders, he, he, he tells them that he's going to put in their place people who they would think were unworthy, maybe sinners. Man, we know Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners, so it's no surprise to me that Jesus entrusts the production of fruit from the vineyard to those we don't expect those fruits to come from. Let's remember that Jesus gave himself for us, even though we're sinners. And he says, God the Father loves you so much that he gives his very life to you. And we receive that life when Jesus sacrifices himself on the cross. And here in the Mass today, we, because of that, are able to receive the very life of God when we receive the Eucharist. Well, what are we supposed to do with that? We're sinners. We've come to know the Lord, and Jesus is sending us out into the vineyard to produce and to reap a harvest of fruit that is bountiful. That's what we're called to do. We do that, quite simply again, by placing ourselves in service to the gospel and by living lives of service to others, especially those most in need. This is what we're called to do. This is our faith. And so today as we contemplate these uh, grapes and vineyards and vines and, and, and the fruits of the vine and the work that needs to be done to bring forth a bountiful harvest, let us resolve to be those who bear good fruit, to produce not wild grapes or grapes that aren't surrendered to the Father at all, but let us please the Father of Heaven, the Master, by what we do and how we serve the Gospel and serve others. Have a nice day, everybody.